Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. On July 21st, 1861, picnic goers hopped in their carriages and buggies to head on a 25-mile ride from Washington, D.C. to a Virginia hillside. They gathered round to watch an event. It was a battle. This was the first Battle of Bull Run. The first major showdown of the Civil War. And even though that doesn't seem like football, well, it does tie into this week's episode because this is the event that is often referred to as the first American tailgate. Welcome to the Football History Dude Podcast, where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. Your host is Arnie Chapman. Football is his passion, and he wants you to come along with him to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board his DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. This time we step up the DeLorean, the date is November 6, 1869 in New Brunswick, New Jersey. We're here to witness the first college American football game. Even though it doesn't look anything like it does today, and there were probably a little bit of pre-game spirits going around, there was only like roughly maybe a hundred fans that just didn't quite have that same spunk as what you see nowadays with college football games of a hundred thousand plus people roaming around the stadium before the game on Saturdays. And what are these hundred thousands of fans roaming around the stadiums? Well, they're there for tailgating, of course. Some just go to the stadiums to tailgate. They don't need to even go inside to watch the game at all. They watch it on TV. It's a major college tradition. Well, it's not just college. This is uh, primarily an NFL history show. It's also an NFL major tradition on Sunday mornings. But this week's guest is more about the college game. I mean, people go nuts for it. They have a pure passion. And that is where this week's guest comes in. This week's guest is Luke Lorick, founder of Tailgating Challenge, something that he started way back in 2012. He decided he was going to share his passion for tailgating with the world. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is Tailgating Challenge? Well, Tailgating Challenge is the world's leading site to learn about all the new tailgating gear. Luke has tested over 700 tailgating products, given away thousands of fun prizes, founded three national days, and inspires people to take their tailgating to the next level. And speaking of the giveaways... <laughs> Luke put together a cool tailgating challenge giveaway package for one lucky winner of the Sports History Network. Now, for your chance to win this tailgating challenge swag bag, complete with a t-shirt, koozie, credit card bottle opener, and custom tailgating emblem, all you have to do is head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash tailgate. That's T-A-I-L-G-A-T-E, tailgate. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash tailgate. That's going to take you directly to the Luke Lorick page to enter the giveaway, but then also learn more about Tailgating Challenge, where you can see some of his hundreds of YouTube videos, go over to his website, all sorts of things. Just head over there, again, to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash tailgate. But now, let's get into that interview that I've been talking about with Luke Lorick. I the title of the, the Side Hustle Show when I, when I was looking into it. I, the thing, it's so weird. I hadn't looked listen to that show in so long i just randomly said oh let me go flip through the episodes here and then i see this one that says how one football fan turned tailgating into an online business i'm like wait a second i gotta i gotta listen to this one so i listened to it and lo and behold i have luke lorick here from the tailgating challenge and i just wanted to bring you on let's tell your story let's maybe just go back to what is the tailgating challenge and the origin 
Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. So Tailgating Challenge was born and inspired to be 10 years ago in October. So 10 years ago in a town called Sugar Hill, Georgia, I got in bed one night and I woke up and I said, Tailgating Challenge, I need to do this. I love tailgating. I have a couple of business degrees. And I was like, let's have some fun with this thing because I just wanted a side hustle, right? So I do all the corporate America stuff. Um, but to be able to do something you have control over and something that's fun, right? All these extra hours d- don't feel like work. Um, so I got out of bed. I made the Facebook page. I got back in bed. And then from there, started, then made, you know, Twitter, then got a website set up, then got Instagram, then started doing YouTube videos and the progression to where you see today. But it, it started back then. And so the, the intent of it at the time was essentially just ha- have some fun, right? Have some fun, meet some cool people, uh, get some cool products. And so, and that's how it, that's how it started. Um, with it now, like work with over 700 companies tested out just tons and tons of really cool and unique, like tailgating, home gating, grilling, drinking products, um, of the such like over 900, like YouTube videos out there now, which is different things, um, uh, that I just get to do. And I've just made it part of my life. So like in the morning I'm, I'm setting up stuff to like showcase different products, you know, doing reviews, um, you know, responding to messages, building content, uh, shooting videos, like pretty much every weekend. It's like it's become something that my wife and friends and those around me like, like, no, that's going to happen. And it's not so much of like, oh, God, it's going to happen again. It's like, sweet, let's see what he's got set up. Like we can sit back, we can drink a beer, we can get some laughs, we can let the camera roll for a few minutes and have some fun while we do it. So just trying to make some fun and showcase like tailgating products and the passion of the stuff that I do uh, to everybody out there. Yeah, you mentioned having fun. I mean, I've been with so many different videos, I haven't been able to watch them all by any means, but I could tell that you take a little bit of creative, uh, what's it called? Creative flexibility or genius or whatever you want to say, and you, you, you go ahead and have fun with it. And it's almost like even if you weren't turning it into a side hustle, I could see you doing this anyways for fun type of deal. I mean, you said Georgia. I see a Carolina shirt. In the bio or whatever you want to call it, your media kit, it talks about a bunch of different places in Texas. I mean, what what what's your home? Who do you root for? <laughs> so I'm I'm born and raised in South Carolina. So I'm a alumni of the University of South Carolina. So I'm a Gamecock. I always will be big time fan. Um, and so, but corporate America job, and I was working corporate America job in South Carolina. And then we closed the office down, and so I had the chance to move with the company, move to Atlanta. So that's where Atlanta and then outside of Atlanta is where like tailgating challenge was quote unquote born. Um, and then from there, my wife got a job in Texas. So then we moved to Texas and just like it started taking next level in Texas and then wanted to get out of the hustle and bustle of the city. And so I elected to st- still stay with my original corporate America company and go to Colorado. So now I'm in a town called Loveland, Colorado. Um, out here, it, it snows way more here than it ever has in any of the cities I've lived in. Um, and so we're enjoying it out here right now. Yeah, I did that whole moving around a little bit for the same company I work for, but not not <laughs> three or four different times. But I went down to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, geez, from 2013 to 2018. Then I moved back up to Michigan. So I can relate to that whole moving from like the southern back to the snow and we used to actually ship products to Loveland, Colorado, so I know where that's at okay. on the map, at least. <laughs> nice. But well, so, OK, so we got this tailgating challenge and you said I just woke up in the middle of the night and I decided to write it down and I opened up a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. How, how do we get from to that point where <laughs> you, you, you do that and then 10 years later we have you know all these followers and I'm talking to you and I'm reaching out specifically because I want you're a hot commodity. I got to talk to you on this podcast. Yeah. So I'll say for like, I'm, I'm passionate about just entrepreneurship and just like, if there's something you believe in, like you're, you're going to have to work hard. Right. And so like you see some of these like, oh my gosh, this video got 15 million views. They just got like a million followers. Like, I, I, hey, I still don't have that. Um, and it doesn't happen for most people like overnight. And so it's something that is the process. As I tell people, like, I don't really take a day off from this. Um, because there's always something to do to move the business forward. And it's like, if you're, if you're invested in it and you're going to put the time and the grit into it to get it done, you're like, you'll keep learning. I look back at some of the stuff that I was doing, like when I first started, I was like, man, that was pretty bad, um, to where I am now, not saying that I'm perfect by any means, but it's just like the evolution of it and just like appreciating like the, the journey, um, of what it is. And so I tell like everyone that's interested because everybody nowadays wants to be 
quote unquote, an influencer, right? The influencer to get free stuff and get paid to do it and all that good stuff. Um, and so, but there's, there's more to it than just like just being an influencer. Like you have, there's, there's a lot that goes into it to be successful at it. And some people hear the term influencer and they kind of laugh it off, but like to be a successful one and make a brand out of it, like it can truly be a full-time job if you invest everything into it and really chase that dream and do it the right way. So, so what is maybe, uh, this is more of a football history show, but two to three tips why you said you could either be an influencer or you could do it the right way and cut you or not an mm-hmm. influencer, but you can wake up and say, I'm going to be an influencer, but there's right. all that, the grind that gets into it. Like what's two to three tips for someone that listened to this show that even though it's football history, they would start say a podcast or maybe a YouTube channel mm-hmm. about the history of the game. What's, what's some kind of recommendation you can get for them? What well, I'd say pick something you're passionate about. If you're not passionate about it, it's going to feel like work. And if you're doing it as a side hustle, you're going to get burnt out and then you're not going to be able to take those steps because that's the next part of it too, is like consistency, right? You have to be able to commit like, Hey, I'm going to do this and hope it's going to be fun, right? Because you're passionate about it, but I'm going to do this, like maybe not every day, but you're going to put something in there like almost every day to help move it forward. And then finally, like there's going to be challenges in adversity and like, creativity is going to be key in thinking positive because trust me, there's plenty of times where I'm just like, man, this isn't going to work. I can't believe I'm spending all this time on it. And like being able to overcome yourself and overcome some of those adversities that you have. So again, I know that's super high level, like motivational speak and all that that goes into it. But like, that's the stuff that like worked for me. Be, Be positive, overcome the challenges, find something you're passionate about, and then dedicate some time to doing it every single day so you can move it forward. No, I mean, I agree with that, too, because that's uh, the, the whole we use the podcast space, for instance, it's the 10 episodes and I'm out kind of thing because you can, you don't see the downloads coming in and it's not going to mm-hmm. happen overnight. I mean, realistically or anything like that, but at least if you're passionate, you enjoy what you're doing, and especially from this perspective of the football history. It's, you know, if you're into it, you kind of have a little bit of a niche type of thing as well. And uh, you kind of you, you join, uh, we'll call it a niche of your own. Uh, what is. I got to make sure I get this right here. National Tailgating Day. Yeah, so so National Tailgating Day is one of my proudest accomplishments. <laughs> um, because it's like, you know, it's, it's back in like 20, 2015, 2016. <clears throat> And I was, you know, seeing all this stuff like National Talk Like a Pirate Day, National Wear Flip Flops to Work Day, it's like National This Day. I was like, great, I'm in the tailgating space. When is National Tailgating Day so I can celebrate it? And lo and behold, there wasn't one. And so at that point, I was like, you know what? <laughs> the world needs this, or at least the tailgating community does um, for it. So I, I went through the channels in regards to getting with a national day calendar. I basically have to fill out some stuff to like, like, why is this guy able to like say that there should be, <laughs> be a national tailgating day? Well, luckily I had like a, a decent tailgating brand at, at the time. I won't say it was the best one, but it was, it was up and coming um, for it. And so being able to, to do that kind of gives you that subject matter expert to say like, Hey, here it is. And so from there, they like approved. And like it was just really cool to see like that yeah, come to fruition. It's the first uh, Saturday of every September. So basically aligns with kickoff of college football um, and just something to look forward to. And I know like for a lot of people that are like, there's a lot of football fans. I'm sure, sure your show has a lot of football fans on there. And they're probably like I am like, man, football just got over. But like I'm already counting down until like we get back um, like to well, at this point. I'm thinking combine. I'm thinking uh, the draft, I'm thinking fantasy football, like all the stuff that leads up to the season as well, too. And like this is just one of those events. This gives us one more reason just to get out there and do some of the stuff we like. And maybe if it's with one of your friends that you're on the edge of it, you're like, dude, it's National Tailgating Day. Let's go out there. Okay, you twist my arm. Let's go have some fun. Right. Yeah. Twist my arm real hard on that one. But mm-hmm. <laughs> well, so the, the, you said the process and like, who is this dude that can do it? Like, what is the actual, I don't know if I wanted to go the sports history network day or not or national sports history day, I guess we'll use that as an example. Like what would I even do? Uh, well, I would say that na- national day calendar is who I would, I would tell you to, to look up because there, there's, there's a form and you have to, I don't even remember all the questions that were on there now. Cause this was like over five years ago now when I did that particular one. Um, but you're going to put the stuff in there as to like, why, like what your vision is, what the, what the thought process is behind it. Right? And again, make sure there's like, not that day out there, right? Because if the day's already out there, it's, it's going to get rejected, um, so to speak. And then just 
see if they say yes. They say they, say they don't say yes to everything. Again, I, I don't know. I don't work for them. I have no, no idea what their process looks like behind the scenes. Um, but I'd say that if it's something you're passionate about, you can always, you know, just fill it out and see because that's how I do all of my stuff. If I think about something, hey, I'm going to try. I'll be told, I've been told no plenty of times, but I've been told yes a lot too. So um, if you think it, just go out there and ask some questions and see what can happen. Yeah, I mean, it's you have a couple other ones too. What were the other two that you registered? Yep, National Home Gating Day, which is bringing the uh, the party, the tailgating party to your house, and then National Yard Games Day, uh, which again, I love playing. Like you, everybody that, like cornhole. Like people think cornhole, they think beer pong uh, for, it, but there's so many other like really amazing like call them lawn games, yard games, tailgating games. Um, and so just like getting people out there, the fir- it's the first day of summer um, of just like one more reminder to get outside and just like have some fun. Because, you know, part of this too is like, I feel like we're, we're very connected society in regards to like TV, phone, social media. Um, and I'm a, I'm a fan of that, right? That's, that's part of what I build some of this on. But at the same time, I, I get like the part of like, we need those connections, those human to human connections and having fun, laughing, smiling and getting, getting outside and doing some of these things, which is another reason why I think like these, these things are important because some people are like, oh, it's another day out of like 10 billion national days. It seems like there are. Um, but, but it's something that I'm passionate about. And I think that if people do them and celebrate them, they usually come out like a little bit happier. And so that means something to me too. How many of these different, because you you moved different climates recently, how many different, I guess, stadiums do you think you've been to for tailgating across the nation? <laughs> it's my short answer. Not not enough. Does that? <laughs> so, I, and truly, it, it is not enough. And there's people that's done a lot more, like, probably broad tailgating than I have. Did a lot at my University of South Carolina, a lot of it there. Um, because that's where, and that's where some of the passion grew from, um, was from the University of South Carolina of going out there, like literally every single home game and, and doing that. So, um, I don't have the, probably the, the breadth of saying like, I've been to like a stadium in every state in America, like still want to do that. Um, you know, I, I will say that it's like, you know, when I was in Texas, like I was driving three to four hours a day round trip just to my corporate job. And so then I, I was tired by the weekends in regards like I didn't want to get in a car and then like go haul my, you know what, across the, the country or something to go do that. So, um, and then COVID hit whenever I moved here to Colorado. So then a lot of that was curtailed till here recently. So all that being said, we're going to get out there. We're going to do some more tailgating this season, try to have some fun, meet some people and see some new venues. How's that? Yeah, there you go. I mean, that's uh, like you said, in the future, your goal, one of my goals that, uh, whenever I hit the lotto or some rich billionaire on this, listening to this podcast wants now, you know, give me a bunch of money. I'm going to buy an RV and I'm going to follow my beloved Detroit lions on every game to watch them in the stadium that they go to in every game. And along the way, we're going to, you know, pick up the sites of the local places and stuff like that. So that's a, I guess we'll call that a bucket list item, maybe like the John Madden cruiser. Speaking of like a cruiser and, you know, going out to different things. I saw one of the the advertisements, postcards, whatever you want. Uh, it looked like you were racing Bowser on like some kind of go-kart cooler looking thing. What was that? Yeah. Well, that was just kind of a fun thing, right? So like, m- motorized coolers, I've, I've tested a couple of those out over the course of my time here at Tailgating Challenge. And again, it's, a, it's fun, right? And to me, it's, it's one of those products that is like, it's the epitome of tailgating of fun that gets people to be like, ooh, cool um and so yeah so we we had that and then i had a graphics guy just kind of put like the mario karts around it because like a motorized cooler that's like racing mario kart style it just it just seemed kind of fun and that's that's the end of the day it goes back to fun 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 is the the word that we like to live by around here so that cart right there if you were trying to go like you know some of the tailgating it's like in a field it's it's an old field it's bumpy dirty and all that stuff is it pretty good for handling that I'd say that there's there's only a handful of them on the market right now. There are some that are very well suited for pavement only, and I probably wouldn't take them off road. There's others that have, and you can look at the tires and they're raised up a little bit. Like those are the ones that would probably do better um, going off road. I don't want to I don't want to do any name dropping for brands on here right now, but um, there you can check out our site. And you can see all the reviews we've done. That's what we should um, do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shameless plug of the day. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how many too are out there, like the. Uh, 
the homemade gadgets and things like that for just like, like even they watch your videos and they do that and go out and make their own. Um, speaking of products, you just kind of give that shameless plug. Let's talk about that. You said earlier <laughs> at the product reviews and such, I don't know, maybe uh, pick three to five. I like that number for some reason of like your, your, your major products, your favorite products, whatever you want to talk about that you've reviewed. Yeah. So what I try to do too, is I, I try to drop like a new top 10 list, like around the holidays we talked about. And it, I try to do ones that I haven't done because there's some like a motorized school, I feel like could be on there like every single time, right? Because I love it. It's fun. It's the epitome of tailgating. Um, but trying to pick out since I like test products literally like throughout the year um, forward of like finding like, you know, 10 new products. Because there's so many like cool products that people don't know about. And that, that's the part, too, that a lot of people tell me, like, like Luke, I didn't even know this stuff was even out there until we saw it on your site. And so that's kind of cool, too. Like, I'm staring right now at uh, a new product that was on our um, National Home Gating Day Top 10, which is Super Bowl Sunday. And so it's a speakeasy wall vault. And so it is literally, it looks like a wooden American flag on the wall. But then there's a key fob, and you flash it in front of there. You hear it click, it unlocks, and then it folds open and then you can like you have your drinks and everything behind it. so it's like it's a secret speakeasy bar for your house um which is cool because you can lock it up for you know obviously kids getting involved with it or if you just have sketchy friends that are trying to take your good stuff you can lock it up in there too so um uh, so yeah that one obviously the motorized cooler i think is really cool but another cooler that like, i took out to a lot of tailgates this last year was the remote control cooler and so the reason like that one's cool is like it's literally like, you have a remote in your hand and you drive the cooler around. You don't sit on it like the other one, but you drive it around. And so it has a stereo system in there. It's got headlights on it. And so what made that cool, because that was like last year was like coming off of COVID. And so like still it's like some people aren't quite ready to get like all like, I don't want to say in your face, but maybe around you. And so just like connecting with people, like I would just drive them and say, hey, take a beer out of there. Enjoy. Right. Just take because we, we were testing out there's a company that gave us some. Um, like new drinks to try out. And I was just like, just passing out to people and re and recording it. <laughs> Please be 21 years of age and drink responsibly. There's your shameless uh, attorney ad spot right there too. Um, but that, that's just like really fun um, for to be able to, to, because again, people see the stuff. Like I love it when people's jaws go, whoa, that is cool. Um, so another jaw dropping product too, that, that we've done, done a test on um, is for a fire pit that has a Bluetooth sound system built into it. And that's cool on its own, right? But then it has a beats to music button. So you push the button and the flames will start dancing to the music uh. that you're playing out of the fire pit. Mesmerizing, jaw dropping. Really cool. Yeah, that is very cool. So you, you mentioned earlier, go back to that, the cooler. And, you know, I had that. That was like just a specific moment. But what's your creative process for some of the... The products that you've had that were that you've reviewed even without being out at the tailgate section, like how do you come up with how you're going to make a video? Yeah, no. And so the thing, the majority of them don't don't happen at a tailgate, right? Because like I'm doing videos literally every single week. Like right now, it's got snow all over the ground, right? And so how, like how do you adapt, right? Because it's not like a lot of people say, oh well, tailgating challenge. I, I guess you don't do anything then until like August. I was like wrong. I'm doing stuff like every almost every single day with something new. Um, and I think part of that, too, it goes back to what we talked about at the beginning of just like that time and consistency and like overcoming like the challenges and, and thinking creatively as to how to do that. Um, so it's everything from shooting it in my basement. Uh, we got a little nice little kind of home gating set up down here with some of that backdrop. Um, it could be out on, on the deck. It could be like some of these products are outdoors and living in the mountains like I'll climb to the top of the mountain and we'll shoot a shoot a video off the top of the mountain with like really cool backdrops. Um, on it too or it could just be literally out in the street like out in the street in front of the house right and we just we just do something there so i think it's like don't limit like don't limit yourself is what i tell myself and others too like there, there's a way like if you want to do it there's a way don't just say oh well there's, there's no tailgating right now we can't do anything well yeah you're not going to get anything done you're not going to like ever ever push past what you're trying to get to right now yeah, I mean, you can that excuse that you can walk right over, or you can just let it be your roadblock or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I mean, you don't even have these products too. It's not just tailgaters, as campers. I take it outdoors. People, anybody oh, yeah. could really be interested in this stuff. There's a lot of crossover between like camping and outdoors with tailgating. And I think because a lot of it happens outside. When you think of fire pits, you think of grills, you think of coolers, like all of that stuff is synonymous. You you might not just roll up on your 
uh, motorized cooler to the campsite, like playing some hip hop music. Maybe that doesn't happen. Um, but with a lot of the coolers and grills that, that I test out, there is a lot of crossover for that. I know we have a strong contingent of fans who, who enjoy camping a lot. Okay, so maybe it's a whether it's a fan that enjoys camping that's never been to a tailgate, or it's someone that's maybe been, uh, I will call it a casual tailgater, going to a couple games and they just kind of hop on, but they want to. They're now a brand new season ticket holder to whatever their favorite stadium mm-hmm. is, and you you're going to recommend I don't know a package or however it is like to get started to be a tailgater. What would you give to them? Um, let's see. So, and we're t- we're talking like physical products. It could be physical products or maybe just like the general atmosphere or like how I have a, I don't even know what, what space that I've blocked off. You can give me products. Mm-hmm. You can give me the, 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 the atmosphere, whatever it is that you would say to a newbie, I want to get started. What would you do? Yeah. So I guess high level. And again, we, we could drill this down depending on budget and so many different things, but I, I go back to a, like friends and family, right? To me, that's what really makes a tailgate outside of all, all the money, all the cool products. If you're with good people that you enjoy being around, like that's step one. Um, you're going to need a cooler, right? You, you, well, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to have, even if you don't drink alcohol, you still probably want to have a cooler so you can have like even the non-adult beverages. And if you have kids and stuff there, it's usually good to have two coolers. So you know that one of them is kid friendly. Um, if you're going to do food, uh, plan ahead. Right. If you're going to grill, like you need to plan ahead. If you're smoking and doing stuff, like what time do you need to be there to make sure you can get all the stuff done? You need to recognize traffic because sometimes traffic can get horrible going to some of these games. So there's a sweet spot for getting there on time. And the, and I say the parking space is kind of a big deal. Like if, depending on what you want to do, like back when we just got out of college and didn't really have any money, we were parking like in dirt parking lots in the middle of no, nowhere, just trying to trying to have some fun eating a Subway sandwich and drinking a, a Natty Light. Um, with it now, I have some some Walmart cooler. No, not go Walmart or their coolers by any means. Um, but yeah, so I, I think it, it can really be like, you, that's some of the high level stuff and you can get really drilled in as to like, okay, we're coordinating. You're going to bring this. I'm going to bring this. We're going to meet up here. You bring this gear. I'll bring this gear. Like we got to be here by this time. We got to have the tickets. You have the tickets on your phone. Are they going to be, like, you could get real like in depth with some of the stuff, um, for it, but back to a shameless plug. If you want to learn about some of the cool tailgating gear that's out there, I bet you can find it on our site. Yeah, we may or may not have to figure out where that site is here in a few <laughs> minutes. And do you ever have, you ever think about maybe creating some kind of app that would be for various things? So I, I've thought about it. I know that there are a few tailgating apps out there now um, with some companies that are doing some things like in regards to like meeting tailgaters um, out there. And it has like a GPS like you could like you could legit. All right. So. I'm going to go online. Like I'm just flying in for a game. I don't have any gear with me. I don't have, I just want to hang out and see some of the local, local people. They supply everything. And like, they pair you with people that are basically welcome you in for like a small fee. And then you have the app on there. So it shows like GPS, like where they are. And so then you just find over there. It's like, Hey, Hey, I'm Luke. Like, oh gosh, it's Luke. Yeah. They don't, don't get that excited, but maybe one day they will. Um, with it. And so there is an app for that. Um, for So there are a few things like app related out there. I haven't got into that part just yet, but hey, you never know. This could be the part where I look back and I'd be like, you know what? You gave me that idea back on <laughs> March 1st of 2022. And here it is a couple of years later. I don't know. Yeah, who knows where it goes, but you're a passionate individual who keeps going after it and you're not going to look back. So I could see something down the road. And I mean, that's pretty I never even knew that they had some of those apps out there. That's that's interesting for especially, say, like you said, traveling someone or you're going to maybe, a, I don't know, an away game or some any any kind of instance where you want to find someone that could be there. And I'm going to have a game for you here in a little bit. Uh, but I want to tell you, so you, you, you struck a chord with me. Okay. The, I, again, Detroit Lions fan, uh, Ford's field is our, our home stadium. And we used to always park in this one. You, you talked about like an abandoned dirt lot. It wasn't a ba- dirt, but it was abandoned. And I was down there downtown. I don't know, maybe a couple of two, three months ago, we're driving around and I was about to say, yep, that's where we always park for the, that's where they built the new Little Caesars Stadium for the Red Wings and the Pistons, right where I used to park. So I have no idea where to park now when I go down there. Oh, no. So there you go. Be prepared, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, so here's that game we're going to play. The, I don't know if you can see this in the screen. It's a DeLorean. Yep. Back to the future, man. All Love right. The movie. So we're going to go back to the future, but you might actually be the first guest that's going to go 
actually to the future. This is number two. This is the second <laughs> Back to the Future. Okay. I normally take you back in time to maybe relive a moment of history of football or something, but you're you got something different. I want to play a little game. So we're gonna go to the future. Uh, what is the tailgating product that doesn't exist today, but might end up being a mm. game changer? You know, pun intended, of course, but a game changer. Forget about technology barriers or anything like that that you would like to see in the market, maybe 10, five to 10 years from now. That is a good question. Yeah, I, I might have to give a little bit of thoughts. I mean, some of my initial things like, how about this? It's a 3D printer. And now it's a grill. So instead of you grilling, you just type in what you want and it just prints out your hamburger or your hot dog with all the condiments on it. How's that? No, that'd be perfect. <laughs> that'd be great if we could get something like that. All right. So there you go. Now you have your new mission. I'm going to see you in 10 years. It's going to be the tailgate and, you know, our trademarked grill or 3D printer and everything. But speaking of that tailgating, so if the listener of the show is interested again in tailgating gear or learning about anything like that, where do you want the listener of the show to go? I'll say we're we're everywhere out there. So like our website is www.tailgatingchallenge.com. Type in tailgating challenge into any search engine. You're going to see Facebook. You're going to see Twitter. You're going to see Instagram. You're going to see YouTube. You're even going to see our poor little pitiful TikTok account out there too, because I haven't figured that one out just yet. Um, but yeah, I say YouTube is where we put all of our videos. So I encourage people to go check out some of those. I've been doing it for years and there's just like some really unique things. And we try to make, we try not to take ourselves too seriously. Um, and the one thing about reviews too, is I tell everybody is that I don't get paid for the reviews and that's part of like the process for the, like the integrity, um, for, I don't, I don't think everybody believes that. Cause I think there's unfortunately way too many people getting paid to say things about products out there. So it's hard to overcome that. Um, but like high level, like we'll, we'll get a product from a company. Um, and I'm very transparent. I say, it's good. I'm not going to take any money from you up front. It's going to be real and genuine. I'm going to say the good things. I'm going to say the bad. I'm not going to go out there and be like, this is the biggest piece of beep. Like, I'm not going to do that. Right. But I'm going to be honest in regards to areas of opportunity, um, for that, because I feel like people that, that follow me and like tailgaters in general, like people work hard for their money. And so it's like, if you feel like this dude said this thing was awesome and it sucks, like that's a, I, I feel bad. I feel bad. Like just doing that to someone in general. Um, and B, I don't think it helps you like as a brand grow. Like if you're just out there just saying all this stuff is amazing and then people are getting in there like, no, no, it's not. Not to say that my opinion is right about everything. I'm going to give you my opinion um, about that particular product um, for it. And so we put it out there. So if you ever want to learn about a product, we <laughs> we might have tested it out of the 900 videos we've done. My goal is to get to 1,000 videos on YouTube by the end of this year as well, too. Got some more videos to do this week. Oh, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll have to keep looking at that again at tailgatingchallenge.com. Basically, like you said, search Google or anywhere in your search bars, tailgating challenge, you're going to find it. With that being said, tailgating challenge, how about... Any last words of tailgating wisdom, knowledge nuggets you want to dispel on the listener of the show? <laughs> um, let's see. So, so knowledge, like we got some fun stuff coming. Like one of my goals, we talked about goals, right? A minute ago. And so one of my goals this year, um, I've been approved to attempt. I'm going to tease you a little bit. I've been approved to attempt a Guinness world record. Actually three of them so far I've been approved to, to do. I can't say what they are yet until they actually get done. Um, for, but it's going to have a tailgating, tailgating spin, um, on it. So, I'm I'm really excited and kind of I don't want to say nervous, but it's just like it feel like it's a big deal, right? To to be able to like if you can do that. Um, and my thing too is like hey, if it gets out there and like I, and I get it, like I encourage it, like come break it, right? So I like not not, not saying like this is a like challenge, a tailgating challenge, but like I, at the end of the day, like I, it's cool to do it once, but it's also cool if other people like can do that too. And so like, I'm not this person like, no one better ever attempt my record. If you beat it, I'm going to be mad at you. Now I'm going to high five you and say, you're awesome um, for it. So, and I said, I'll leave it too with this, that like the, the motto we have, uh, we talked about fun, but like the motto, I have it on, I, I literally have it on one of these like big chains. I can show you here in a minute. Um, like the turnover chain, like the Miami and, and stuff like promoted back in the day. Um, but it's our motto is don't hate, just tailgate. The world, there's 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 hate in this world. And I feel like at tailgates, people come together like never before. It doesn't matter your age, your religion, your race, any of that. Like people come together, even opposing fans. And like they break bread, they have drinks, they have fun together. And so as I say, don't hate, just tailgate. I think the world would be a better place. There you go. Don't hate, just tailgate. Seems like four little words that could... Maybe bring some peace to the world.
To learn more about Luke and for your chance to win this tailgating challenge swag bag, complete with that t-shirt koozie credit card bottle opener and custom tailgating emblem, all you got to do is head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash tailgate. Again, let's spell that out. T-A-I-L-G-A-T-E, tailgate. Head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash tailgate for your chance to win that tailgating challenge swag bag. And while you're at it, this is the end of the episode. There's nothing better to do but to listen to another one. And to make sure you get next week's episode as soon as it's released, all you gotta do is mash that little subscribe or follow button for free on the podcast player of choice. That way you get the hottest, fresh South Press episodes well, each and every week. But until next time, dude, I'm through if you're through. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Football History Dude. To make sure you're the first to get the next episode, please subscribe with your podcast player of choice and head on over to thefootballhistorydude.com for the show notes and more information on the history of the NFL. And remember, dudes, where we're going, we don't need roads. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories, and Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.